I moved here when I was uh, in the first grade. And uh, when I was in the fourth grade, uh, they had just built a new swimming pool over in town. And the talk of the town was, you know, if the pool was a good thing or not. Uh, some of the old timers have wasted money. The other topic of conversation was, the dam is coming. They're going to build a dam. And that was the talk of the town. And it was a real, the economy in Carthage was poor. Everybody was hoping to work. Uh, usually a family that was really doing well. The husband made $100 a week, and half of the people were unemployed. So it, it was a poverty-stricken town, so the, the dam meant something to the people. But uh, I was in the fourth grade, and remember all the old-timers talking about the dam coming. Fourth grade, I was uh, in the twelfth grade, which is, uh, what was that, eight years later. Uh, they finally signed contracts. Uh, Guy James Construction. Uh, got the, the contract to build the, uh, the floodgates and the lock and that was going to be built first and then the power plant would come last. And so the idea was to build that part, divert the river through the lock and then they would build a coffer dam and build this. And that's, So uh, uh, what happened was a guy named George Green who was the superintendent of Guy James came to town and um, of course they'd done all the surveying, knew where it was going to be and everything. And he started trying to hire a crew of locals to, to be a core work group. Now we didn't realize at the time that there was a situation brewing that there was going to be uh, some problems with the union. The, the, the Teamsters wanted to build the entire dam. Now, we didn't know anything about that. but. Um, I found out years later from Richard Harper, who is still alive, he was a state trooper, Mr. Green asked him, who could I hire that, that would uh, not necessarily know how to operate construction equipment, but would not be afraid of the union? And so he directed uh, Mr. Green to the Bowman clan. And there was about 40 or 50 of them living in this area at that time. And so Mr. Green personally hired my dad and had him hire all of his cousins and brothers and relatives and people he knew. And so we started, the river came through and over there the, where you see the, uh, the lock, the, the, the river's bank came this way, I'd say a good 200 feet to 100 to 200 feet this way. And that was all just land. Uh, all our equipment was up on about the top of where the riprap is over there. And uh, we were to learn to operate that equipment and just play around with it. And little did we know that um, that trouble was brewing because one day we came through, of course we had to come through the, uh, the road over on the uh, Horseshoe Bend side and one day we came up and there was about a hundred guys there with picket signs and we didn't understand what was going on. And we, we found out pretty quickly and and as a matter of fact when we found out the union was wanting to take over we we inquired about joining the union. It might be a good thing, you know, we didn't want to cause trouble. But we were informed that we could join the union but no one from Smith County would work on this project because they had people sitting on the bench. And so, not to go into a lot of detail, but uh, a couple of weeks later, a, a lot of cars that said uh, Cook County, Illinois, big Cadillacs, about seven or eight of them. And um, there were people here from Chicago manning all the equipment. And uh, the, the Carthage boys sent them back to Chicago real quick. So I won't say any more about that. It, uh, if I could go back, knowing what I know now, I would have, uh, I'd have stayed home. But at the time, we were fighting for our jobs, and, and uh, that's what we did. And, uh, so we did end up in court. Uh, the federal judge ruled that this would be uh, an open shop job, and people from uh, Clay County, Overton County, Putnam, all around built that part of the dam. I don't know about what happened over here. I think it, this side did go Union later. But Mr. Green kind of took care of uh, all the guys that kind of were, were loyal and 
made it go non-union. Uh, I don't know if we did a disservice to people or, or not by doing that. A lot of people around here got to work. And uh, it was kind of, kind of important at the time. I don't think the, the newspapers actually cared anything about the, the dispute that was up here. And I do know that the troopers were told to kind of stay out of it, let these boys kind of sell it themselves. Because I never saw one state trooper up here. They just let us kind of take care of business. But as far as... Uh, once we got started, um, most of our materials came by rail into uh, Gordonsville. And right there in South Carthage, there's still a building there uh, where old Highway 53 went into Carthage. There's a big building there next to the, uh, the rail that all of the equipment, uh, tools, uh, for building the dam came there. Right. Um, I remember uh, since we had been kind of faithful to the company, uh, I, I got a pretty good job. I had a little Jeep. <laughs> I had to sit on the... Uh, when they built this this uh, dam, they, they drove big pylons uh, in with a big crane and made a big loop out into the water to build the uh, the uh, the floodgate section right. of them. And um, uh, well, one of my jobs was to maintain the big water pump because water would flood that thing. And so we started from rock bottom down there, uh, forming and, and building that section and and the uh, the lock. Uh, I was from a real poor family and I did, and did not thought much about college and all of a sudden you know here I was a senior in high school and and uh, at that time they didn't have these programs where you could go to college for free or scholarships and uh, I had an opportunity to hire on the dam and uh, I went to my principal and I told him I said I've got a job offer but uh, I've got a problem, you know, I want to graduate too. Is there any way I could do my studies on the weekend and, and work on the dam? And I promise you, I'll save my money and uh, go to college. And uh, Mr. Smith, Irvin Smith, he says, he called everybody Mr. and Mrs. He was very professional. And here I was a punk kid, and he said, well, Mr. Bowman, <laughs> I think that if I do this and go along with you, I think you'll let me down. But uh, I will do this if you will promise to put $2 out of every three you earn in the bank and allow me to check with Mr. Pitchford uh, down to the bank. Uh, and then after you uh, get through with work and you get your money, he said, promise me you'll go to college. I'll do this, but I really think that you'll let me down. I said, I won't let you down, sir. <laughs> and uh, I, I did go to college. I, I didn't let him down. And so I'm uh, grateful to Mr. Smith. He's, he's been deceased for several years. They hired a crew of uh, dynamite men, uh, black, uh, powder men that had actually built the Center Hill Dam, Lonzo Bennett and the Bennett Boys. So they were here doing the, the blasting. Um, a little tidbit, uh, a lot of people might not know, they were going to build the dam without the lock. But the people of Gainesboro protested and really made a big fuss because they didn't want to be landlocked and, and cut off from the river. So because of that, uh, they, they included the lock. We had a guy fell off over on the eastern side. He was on a big walk board finishing the concrete. And uh, he was snapped. He, he, uh, they were real big on safety, but apparently someone dropped the ball and they didn't check his equipment. He had an old leather strap that was rotten. And his belt, he had all these uh, tools for, for, for finishing concrete. He was finishing the holes and uh, that, that gang that way broke loose and his strap broke and he went 
I'd say 30 feet down to the bottom and was impaled. He died on the way to the hospital. That was that was the sad part of the of the uh, the whole job. I can remember an incident that, that happened somewhere right out there where you see those birds flying. <laughs> um, I had uh, gone up to the powder room. We had a room up there that was protected where we kept all the dynamite. And I was told to get uh, the big boxes of big, uh, big sticks about this long, about this big around. Um, when I got back and I opened it up, I told uh, Lonzo, I said, uh, this dynamite has got to be ruined because it's sitting in a big puddle of water. And he came over and he looked at it and he got really scared. He said, don't move. <laughs> he said, whatever you do, don't move. And he says, ease, ease down and untie your boots and, and, and don't let the boot come off the ground. Get your sock feet out, leave your boots. And I did, I did what he said. And he, he said, now back away, back away. Don't make any static electricity. And he did the same thing. Uh, that was nitroglycerin that had leaked out of that uh, plastic explosive. It was old. They'd had it a long time. They wanted to get rid of it. They were going to cut it up in pieces and use it. But uh, that was a scary day. Uh, George Green and two of the, the three of the, the, the executives of the whole job went down there and built a big fire out of boxes way off from it and they took box by box over and pitched it into the fire. Can you imagine that? And a big fireball just went up. But one little spark, see, would have exploded the thing. They knew what they were doing. But that was a scary day. We had four boxes of these things sitting there and they disposed of all of them the same way. We shot, I was on the powder crew that shot that whole area over there. there there was a ridge of the bank left out there middle ways that went all the way down and came up and encircled the uh, the coffer dam um, we were trying to get all that blasted out the, the coffer dam we were afraid we were going it was going to break through and it finally did you see the red buoy down there we had that all loaded and ready to go and it broke through. We had all the holes drilled and the coffer dam broke through and we were out there with uh, trying to get equipment out. Some of the equipment didn't make it. We had to get a crane down there and, and had to go underwater and tie, tie on uh, to get the stuff out. Uh, we uh, had the option, they, they were going to hire some company out of California to bring scuba gear to load those. But me and another old boy decided we, we could do that. And George Green bought us some diving equipment and we loaded that whole end down there, just this side of the red buoy and, and uh, underwater. We had to, couldn't use prime cord, we had to use the caps. And as I think back, that was so dangerous. I mean, it was dangerous. We went underwater and loaded those things. Uh, the, the men would uh, drop the dynamite down a wire stick it in the hole, and I'd have this big pole, I'd just cram it in there and smush it in kind of easily in the bottom. And that wire would go up and, and they ran it all over there to the bank. And, uh, and I got a chance to push the plunger and all that whole thing came up. And fish, there were fish galore. Uh, of course, when the coffer dam broke in, you know, the, the water level flooded in there and I think later, after I was in, went off to college, they had a dredge boat come up and get all that, the, 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 the earth dam that we'd been using. So that's the reason that red buoy is down there. We were supposed to have blasted on down and got over into the channel for river traffic. But uh, I found out that the Corps made a deal with Guy James and they decided that It'd be so expensive to do it that if they ever did have river traffic using it, they could do it at that time. So that's the reason 
There's real good fishing right down there, this side of the red buoy in that hole. <laughs> Under the, the the gates, there's there's a tunnel, if it's still there. <laughs> Goes all the way across, and there's a walkway, and there's some little dra uh, drainage. I think it's on the downriver side of the ditch. But there's holes, seems like they're about that big around. And when we poured that, uh, of course, the, the, some of the concrete leaked through and and uh, we had to go and cut out those holes with a chisel and hammer and that was my job. I remember, uh, now this is getting mundane, but on the other side of the lock, there's a, uh, a ladder. There's a couple of them that goes up and I had to go up the ladder to do some, to help somebody up on top and I, I've got a fear of heights. And I didn't even think about it until I got about two-thirds up, and all of a sudden I froze up. I was 17 years old, and I just grabbed that thing. I couldn't move. I was just, and Jack Bennett came up underneath me, and he said, okay, little little Bowman. He said, we can do it. And he pushed me. <laughs> he grabbed me by the seat of the pants and started pushing me, and we went up that thing. So every time I'm over there fishing, and I, I, it was this lower, the lower ladder, it doesn't look so big now, but at that time there was no water down there, and and you know it's probably 30 or 40 feet, and and I can remember everybody laughing at me. You mean? Oh, uh, those floodgates. Um, uh, uh, one other fellow, a truck driver, and myself were in charge of getting those gates from a train that was in Gordonsville to this job site. And we had to go take out all the routes and had to take a big pole with a ruler, you know, ruler to, to measure. We couldn't go down Highway 70 there by Mr. Gore's house. Uh, the only way we could go was go up I-40 to Smithville Exit, go around the old wavy road, uh, curvy road, and cross over to Old Baxter exit and go to the outskirts of Baxter and come down Old 70, down Old 70 through Chestnut Mound, Elmwood, and then and then we had a crane here waiting to unload it. And we we were able to get uh, one a day. It took us all week to get all five gates here. And I was the flag guy. I, was, I had the, the little yellow light and I'd have to tell people, hey, you can't get off the road. You got to get totally off. You got to find someone's driveway because we covered the entire road and the ditch getting those things up. There's one other funny story. Uh, this is my name, but we had one of the superintendents named McElroy. He was a good guy, but he was real nervous and he was always real hyper and you could get him excited real easily. Uh, Red Warren, our welder, was a real comical guy, and we had found this big snake, a big chicken snake, and it was, it was, it must have been in the the early spring because it was real docile. It was real, it was almost half asleep. But Red put me up to put it in McElroy's truck, and he was parked in line with the lock on the other side. Of course, all that's underwater now. But he had parked there, left his truck running, and uh, was down there checking with the crane guys. And I eased up there and just laid that snake under his coat. And so I eased back up there to the mechanic shop, which was on that side. And we were all just sitting around watching. And McElroy gets in the truck, gets about uh, 15 or 20 feet, the door flings open, he jumps out, and the truck goes in there and crashes <laughs> into a piece of equipment. Uh, I, w I was the guilty party, but now I was, I was expecting my friends not to give me away. Nobody gave me away. McElroy knew that somebody did it, and he was out to find out. He never found out. <laughs> well, he, uh, I, uh, he was about uh, 30 years older, than, well, 25 years older than me, so I can whip him right now, I believe, if, if he comes looking for me. I was I was kind of the guy that they just kept busy. My big job was to run back and forth to Nashville, to the airport. I was the courier. Uh, I had to go to the ice little uh, Joe's Gulf there in Carthage. Had an ice house out there, 
and I'd have to take all of our canisters and uh, chip up ice and and make sure they were you know you know bleached out and clean and I I was a, a guy that did everything when, when there wasn't anything to do. I sat over there in a little jeep and counted all the uh, the loads of dirt that another contractor was taking out. And uh, sometimes I would forget. What, uh, I'd get distracted or something. But I'd check with my drivers. Every, I'd say, now, Joe, I'd, I'd always go to the guy that was really honest. I, I could depend on him. <laughs> well, I got 40 today. I said, yeah, that's good. I said, I know. The other guys, they better have close to 40. <laughs> I was around to help with the riprap over there. We uh, we brought in big loads of that. That, by the way, we had the quarry just over that little ridge there, and all the stone for the dam came out of that quarry, including all that riprap. And uh, myself and two or three guys right there with these big uh, big iron bars. So the crane would drop that rock in, but it'd be clumped up. And we'd have to pull it out and place it, I had to do that by hand. I remember the dam was the earth part of the dam. Uh, they'd use a sheep foot to, to uh, compact it, but up next to the dam, we had to use these big uh, uh, power. <clears throat> and uh, I was pretty strong back then. I couldn't ha handle one right now, but but that thing would fire a piston. It'd come up and it's a couple of hundred pounds and it would come down and really make a, a dent and there was three or four of us in there next to that uh, to the the concrete compacting all that and the core guy was there watching us and making sure we did it properly so uh, the guy that had the boat down there we got him to paddle paddle up here uh, and and uh, Lonzo fixes up some bait with uh, with uh, uh, cap and <laughs> threw it out there with a rock on it and popped it and and everybody took home fish. We did that a couple times. Uh, Lowry, the game warden, now his dad was the game warden. Uh, I never told him about it, but after my college experience, I, I taught school for 17 years. But uh, I, I, I love construction, and now I'm, I've got a little construction company. My son works, and I, uh, my health is failing me, but uh, I help him a little bit. And Once you get that in your blood, you know, construction and concrete, and it's hard to get it out.